Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions today with Pastor Sutton. Glad you are here with us on this Tuesday morning. It is the 7th of March as we uh, prepare for the day that's before us, although for some of you it's already the day that's before you. Um, sometimes I think I should do this earlier so that I can go on to other things. It seems like this sometimes gets in the way, but I don't want to do it any earlier. Um, anyway, good morning. Glad you're here with us. We've had I've had a couple of days visiting with my dad, and he's getting ready to pack up and leave, and it's Greek Tuesday, so we'll have to see how we do with all of this this morning. But uh, glad you're here for a little time in God's Word. Let's, oh, bright, sunny day uh, in Wisconsin, you know. Uh, you have a, a snowy day where it's miserable, and then you have a bright, sunny day, and it's going to be like 43 degrees today, so... I guess we're we're headed back uh, into spring-like conditions. We'll just have to see. It's supposed to snow again on Thursday, so who knows? Somewhere between one and one thousand inches. I don't know. Um, actually, I think the forecast for Thursday is right now is four to eight. But uh, for yesterday, it was four to eight. Sun Sunday night into Monday was four to eight, and I think we got about four. But it was heavy, wet stuff. So. And now, with 43 degrees, a lot of that's going to melt off today. So, Hey, Bob and Jeannie, good morning to you. Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Kathy, good morning. Uh, Connie, Robin, good morning. Um, oh, Leela. Wow, okay. Leela, I almost missed you there. Good morning to you. And Kathy as well, good morning. Um, so Connie and Robin, good morning. New pot of coffee, yeah. Now with Dad here, we're going through two pots in the morning instead of just one. Um, you got an extra person drinking coffee, which means I drink a little more. And... Jerry, good morning. Renee, good morning. Sun shining in 31 right now. Yeah, we're we're sitting at uh, 15 according to the weather service. Um, I don't have my my weather station up to tell me what that's like, but um, I'm going to refresh here just in case there's anybody after Renee, and I'm guessing there probably is. I just, you know, I was looking online before I started to see <clears throat> what troubleshooting, and I've done everything they recommend, and they, they really can't tell me why the comments don't update. Um, someday I may get to the bottom of it, but I don't have time to do all of this stuff, especially not during Lent. Verna, good morning to you. And there's Bonnie chiming in saying, oh, she's saying it's 25, so I don't know what the weather service is thinking. Uh, where does the weather service think I am? Uh... No, it has me here. Um, at one point, I thought I was in Chicago, you know. So that's that's a, that's a thing. But the the point of presence it's called for um, Starlink, which I'm connected to for my internet. The point the the um, the ground station that I use varies because it, it moves around depending on which satellite is the primary connection, and it can be anywhere from up in Canada uh, to down. Uh, by Illinois, if I remember right, <clears throat> there's one, there's one about 45 miles from here. But the satellite has to be oriented and connected to that one. So, but all of those feed back to a, what's called a point of presence uh, in Chicago. The kind of the big connection to the fiber optic is in in Chicago, and there's nine of those I think spread out throughout the U.S. But mine is mine is always connected to Chicago. So, all right. Well, that looks like everybody that's said hi so far. I will. Uh, I'll look here again as we go on to see if anybody else pops up. But good morning to all of you. To those watching in the background not saying anything, hello, glad to see you, glad you're here with us. If you're watching this afternoon or this evening, good afternoon, good evening. Or if you're watching over on YouTube, hello to you as well after 11 a.m. this morning. And uh, uh, whether Facebook or YouTube, like, subscribe, uh, join our little uh, group here on Facebook so that you get the notifications. Like, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications on YouTube. There, I said all that stuff. Let's move on. Let's get right into this. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer uh, for Individuals and Families, the Morning Order. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm 126. We're moving a little quick to get good stuff to do. Psalm 126. Uh, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Oh, I see Dad, even though he's sitting out here in the living room, just chimed in, said good morning. And uh, Kendra, good morning to you. And Glenn, good morning. See, things just keep popping up. Uh, like those in a dream, right? Like like they thought it could never come to pass that things would be would be good again, but now here they are. Here they are good. Like those in the, like, 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 uh, uh, restore our fortunes, O oh Lord, like streams in the Negev. The Negev is, is a desert. It's, it's an area that's dry and arid. And the, uh, uh, when, when the rains come, uh, the streams fill back up. And there's a, there's a, a period of, of growth in, uh, greenery. Things are restored. Things are joyous again. Things are comfortable again. You know, and I think that, the people of Israel probably got used to a life like that because uh, Egypt is that way when they lived there for 400 years. The, um, the Nile, right? The Nile, Egypt is essentially arid desert area except during the rainy season. And the Nile would always flood its banks. And, and the flooding of its banks was, was regrowth for the lands. The water would spread out and, and fill the fields and such. And that would be how when, the, when the crops would grow. So. Restore our, or, uh, uh, restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. The uh, so, all right, that's our psalm today. Let's get on to our reading, which is going to be from Mark chapter 6, uh, verses 35 to 56. Well, oh, Jesus is going back to Gennesaret again. All right, we're, we're picking up where we left off yesterday. So yesterday, the disciples had come back from uh, being sent. Right, they had been preaching and teaching and casting out demons. They came back and they were tired, and and Jesus brought them to a desolate place so they could rest. Um, but it was so busy there; there were so many people uh, that they couldn't rest. And so, having compassion, remember that was kind of the key phrase I said yesterday: compassion, splugness, they that inward wrenching the gut towards the people because they were like sheep without a shepherd, he began to teach them things. So that's where we left off. We pick up at verse 35 here. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing, and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces of the fish. And these, these who ate, uh, those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida. Well, he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, 
The boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night he came to them, walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost, and he and cried out, for all for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were utterly astonished, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to the land at Gennesaret and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we have the feeding of the 5,000. Um, and, it, it, and, and one of the things that I always like to point out here is, is that we say 5,000. Um, and what it says here at the end, in verse 44, it says, And those who ate the loaves were 5,000 men. But it's not just men that are there. Uh, there are women there. There are children there. Um, and so... The number 5,000 is nice, but I'm thinking that the number who ate were closer to 10,000, right? Um, multiple children uh, and, and wives, several of the wives um, and others. So you know, way more than 5,000 people eating, but 5,000 is pretty impressive, right? Um, I think that the 5,000 is just an amplification of the five loaves, right? Um, 10, 10 is a 10 is a uh, number of completion. 100 is the completion of a cycle, and 1,000 is completion of all things. So, uh, you know, Mark is a Mark is a, 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 a man of, of Greek education, and so numbers are significant. And so, five loaves becomes 5,000 people fed, sufficient for all to eat. Um, that doesn't mean that I don't think there were 5,000 men there. Don't don't take it that way. I'm just saying that there's more here than just a uh, census of how many men were in the crowd. Um, but here's, here's the thing, right? The, the, Jesus has been teaching all day. And the disciples, the disciples come to Jesus. He didn't come to them. They come to him and say, hey, this, there's nothing here. This is a desolate place, you know? And these people have been here all day, and they haven't eaten anything. You know, send them away. So they can go into the villages in the area and, and buy food and feed themselves. Yeah. But Jesus looks at them and says, you give them something. You do it. Um, and they say, how? Right? We, I imagine Judas Iscariot is the keeper of the purse. So I imagine he's standing by looking at the feeble number of coins that are in his purse saying, uh, shall we go buy 200 denarii? Right? That's, that's, that's a lot. I'll just leave it at a lot. 200 denarii uh, worth of bread uh, and give it to them to eat? Should we just give them 200 denarii worth of bread? Is that what we really want to do, Jesus? I mean, we only got, we got to survive on what we got here. He just sent them out amongst the villages and said, don't take anything with you. Don't take a staff. Don't take a belt. Don't, or don't take a purse, rather. Uh, take one cloak, not two. Stay where you are welcomed. But don't stay there too long. Um, take what they give you. Live off what they have for you. Um, and yet now they come back here and they, they think the provision of God has been somehow disappeared. I don't know. You give them something to eat. Should we go buy 200 bucks worth of bread? Feed these people? Come on, Jesus. He said, well, go, go see what's out there. How many loaves do you have? Right? And they search the crowds, five five loaves, right? And my understanding from another text, barley loaves, which are not, barley bread's not the greatest bread, but it, it'll it'll feed you. Um, and, and two fish. And Jesus, thanks be to God. 
right? So he he eucharisterizes. Mm -hmm. That is to say, he gives thanks for the for the bread and the fish after people have sat down. How they sit down? They sat down in groups of a hundred, fifties. Um, looked to heaven and said a blessing. He gave thanks. Broke the bread. Same with the fish. Began to divide the fish up. And all ate. And not only did all eat, right? It isn't like, oh, I got a little crumb of bread. Um, all ate and were satisfied. All ate and were completely filled. Could eat no more. And they took up 12 baskets. Five loaves, two fish, 5,000 plus men eating. 12 baskets left over. Something happened. Something happened. It's difficult to be thankful. But sometimes being thankful is exactly the thing that needs to happen. Um, sometimes when we're struggling in the midst of difficulties, what we need to do, what God wants us to do, is to look to Him and say, Lord, thank you for the for the struggle, for the difficulty, for 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 showing me that although I think my faith and, and life is nothing, that I am important to you and that, that you believe I can handle this with your help. And God will take care of it. In whatever his way is. And his way may not be our way. Right, that doesn't that doesn't mean that that you sit down at the table that day when there's nothing left but a slice of bread. You give thanks to God for the slice of bread, and miraculously everybody's plate's covered with bread. That's not always how it's going to work, but He always provides the means. He always, whenever there's temptation, He always provides a way out through Christ. And maybe not the way we want, maybe not the way we think, maybe not the easy way, but He always provides a way. Here to demonstrate the concept of faith and trust in God. He gives thanks to God that they have five loaves and two fish. And however it happened, sign, miracle, everybody ate. When it's over, he tells the disciples, get in the boat and go to the other side. And he goes up on the hill to pray. Goes up on the hill to pray. Um, to his father and our father, probably giving him thanks for the amount of food that was provided and for the growth that's occurring in the apostles and disciples. Um, maybe for strength in the face of dealing with a faithless generation. Um, and when he's up there from the mountaintop, he sees the boat out on, out on the Sea of Galilee, uh, not making very good headway against the when they're going against the winds uh, as they go towards Bethsaida. Um, and he walks out across the water, it's terrifying them. I guess, you know, I guess I'd be pretty scared. And it, guys, he's not walking on the high points. There aren't rocks in the water that he's finding. Um, this is, he's, he is, he's God. If he wants to walk on water, he gets to walk on water, right? Uh, maybe he didn't even walk in the water. Maybe he was floating above it and it looked like he was walking. We don't, it doesn't matter. What matters is he arrives at the boats miraculously. They see him. They're afraid because how can a man walk in the water? It must be a ghost. So they're terrified. And he says, take heart in his eye. Do not be afraid. It's just, it, it's the same idea that goes back to the, to the feeding of the 5,000, right? You feed them. Don't be afraid. I am with you. Right? Paul says it. Paul says it this way: If Christ is with us, if God is with us, who can be against us? So the old wicked foe is always going to be turned against us, and the world is always going to hate us and despise us. You will be persecuted for my name's sake. They will bring you before courts and and councils and question you. That's your opportunity to open your mouth and speak. And don't even worry about what you're going to say, because I will put the words in your mouth so that you can speak. Who gave you the mouth? That's what he says to that's what he said to Moses when Moses says, I, I'm not good at talking. Don't don't ask me to be the spokesperson for you, God. God says, Who gave you the mouth? I'll, I'll don't worry. All right, fine. Your brother, he has a mouth, he can talk. 
I'll talk to you, you talk to him, you'll talk to the people. Right? And as the wind ceases and he comes into the boat, they're astounded. They still don't understand about the five loaves. They still don't know what happened there because as, as Jesus is going through all of these things, even though the disciples are there with him, they see all these things, they see the signs, but they don't get it. Their eyes are, are veiled to the, to the truth that's occurring before them. They don't understand it. Their hearts are hardened, right? And, and God can do that. He can choose to hide himself from us, to harden our hearts so we don't see what he's doing. Um, when they came over to the land of the Gennesaret again, right? This is where the maniac had been, um, the land of the Gerasenes, the Gennesaret. Um, they moored to the shore, and people saw him, and they began to bring people out for him to heal. They're not even questioning it. They're just flowing out to him to heal. They don't care where it comes from. They just know that he will restore people even if they can touch the fringe of his garment. And, and many people, as many people as touched, were made well. It is God's compassion upon his people to save them from bodily harm, right? The, the disciples in the boat with the wind going against them earlier, we heard about in a storm. He does, you know. He, he wants to save us bodily, but he also knows that our bodies are temporary. The 5,000 are hungering after the day of teaching there in the desolate area. He feeds them. Mm -hmm. He provides for our bodily needs daily, both in food and clothing and shelter, through the vocations he's given us. And he provides for us spiritual by giving us his word to strengthen us, giving us his very body and blood to feed us and sustain us and to forgive our sins so that when the time comes, when we are no longer in this world, we are with him through the forgiveness of sins and have the promise of eternal life. He knows that we are here by, by reason of strength 80, 85 years, maybe longer by his good graces. It's a temporary thing. But on the last day, by faith, by his gifts, by the forgiveness of sins, by the promise of life everlasting, by the covenant of Abraham and the new covenant in the body and blood of Christ, we are with him. We are with him in heaven, awaiting the day of the resurrection where we are going to be bodily in his presence again, in a kingdom without sin and with perfection, where nobody hungers and every tear is wiped away. Paradise restored. All by his blood shed upon the cross for you. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day here before we go to our catechesis for today. Heavenly Father, we do not deserve your goodness. Still, you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll go to our Lenten catechesis here. We're continuing with the, with the uh, first commandment today. Again, the first commandment, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. So in the large catechism, uh, section 2, Luther continues, We can say much here about how few people believe this article, for we all pass over it, hear it, and say it. Yet we do not see or consider what the words teach us. For if we believed this teaching with the heart, we would also act according to it. We would not strut about proudly, act defiantly, and boast as though we had life, riches, power, honor, and such of our own selves. This first article of the creed ought to, to humble and terrify us all, if we believed it. For we sin daily, with eyes, ears, hands, body, and soul, money, and possessions, and everything that we have. This is especially true of those who fight against God's word. Yet Christians have this advantage. They acknowledge that they are duty-bound to serve God for all these things and to be obedient to him. We ought, therefore, daily to recite this article. 
We ought to impress it upon our mind and remember it by all that meets our eyes and by all good that falls to us. Wherever we escape from disaster or danger, we ought to remember that it is God who gives and does all these things. In these escapes, we sense and see his fatherly heart and his surpassing love toward us. In this way, the heart would be warmed and kindled to be thankful and to use all such good things to honor and praise God. This is how much, this is how much is necessary at first for the most simple to learn about what we have, what we receive from God, and what we owe in return. This is a most excellent knowledge, but a far greater treasure. For here, we see how the Father has given himself to us, together with all creatures, and has most richly provided for us in this life. We see that he has overwhelmed us with unspeakable eternal treasures through his Son, and the Holy Spirit, as we shall hear in the articles of the Creed that follow. So Luther from the large catechism there on the first article, as we continue now with the Apostles' Creed in its entirety, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Father taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Pardon my reach there. And we continue with a prayer for ourselves and others on this Tuesday morning. Again, O Heavenly Father, you have granted me strength to rise to the tasks of the day. I thank you for uh, upholding me with your mercy and your love. Without your power, I should be unable to live. Give me a grat spirit of gratitude for all your gifts. Above all, dear Father, keep me grateful for the gift of the forgiveness of all my sins through the merits of Christ Jesus, the, uh, your dear Son and my Savior. Grant that whatever need, whatever sorrow may beset my day, my faith in this forgiveness may remain steadfast and firm. Let no grief or pain, no doubt or gloom come between me and the certainty of your love. If it is your purpose to try me this day with difficulties for the body or the heart. Grant that I may, by your Spirit, conquer in this trial and hold fast to your mercy, knowing that the sufferings of this time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that you have in store for me. Make your word my joy, your counsel my guide, your presence my peace. This in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with those as well who have asked for our prayers, whether they need comfort, assurance, or that constant reminder of what you have given. Be with them, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, especially Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Renee, Shazad, Holden and all who call upon your most holy name. Give them strength for each and every day of their lives, and if death draws near, grant them comfort in the reminder of your eternal promise. This in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. 
I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And that's our devotions for today, guys. God's peace be with you. I'm going to get moving here on the other things I have to do, but I will be back here with you tomorrow morning, Wednesday, with our daily devotional time in God's Word for us to share together. God's peace. Gotta find the button. <laughs>